Hey, robot makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So let me just turn that down. So do you want to learn about how to use Veeam and make robots with no code? Then this is the show for you. Let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code or no code, and have, have a load of fun along the way. Okay, let's get over to Keynote and see what today is all about. So yes, we're going to be building some robots with no code today. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I'm also going to show you the, uh, the Veeam rover as well, which they were very kindly sent me. I've been playing with that this week. I'm going to program a, a trial bot from uh, Pimroni as well as a bit of a demo. So who are VM? Who and what is VM? So the reason I was showing the, uh, the MongoDB book at the beginning of the stream is because MongoDB was created by uh, one of the people who created or I should say the person that created VM. So what VM is both an app and a company. It's the name of the, the cloud app that they've created and also the name of the company. Uh, and VM itself is a innovation, uh, an innovative robotics platform. So you can build robots, you can do all kinds of really cool things. I'm going to have a look at some of those things in the stream today. And like I said, it was founded in 2020 by Elliot Horowitz. Uh, so he also co-founded MongoDB and they have their headquarters in uh, New York, which is pretty cool. So what is VM exactly then? So VM kind of comes in two parts. There is a server app which will run locally on your, your little single board computer. There's a whole bunch of single board computers are actually supported. And it's also a cloud app. Um, so the cloud app provides a user interface so you can configure your robots. Uh, it has like a monitoring, it has data capture, which is really cool. So it can capture, say, images and build up a machine learning model. And it has all the machine learning tools available via the cloud app as well. So um, it kind of works in two parts and means that we can do some really, really cool things in the cloud and take some of that away from our, our single board computer. So how does this kind of all work then? So we can use the cloud app to do things like build and configure the robot via their web app. And I've got a little screenshot of what that can look like there. We can manage all our different robots with all the different configurations that they have in this app. Um, and we can, we've can we got these powerful tool sets for developing robots and doing some cool things like inverse kinematics, all this kind of complicated ROS type stuff. We can do this very, very simply with VM. And we can also operate our code either on the robot, in the cloud or anywhere we prefer. We've got that flexibility to, uh, to put that code where we want it to be if we want to actually run code. Uh, and the connectivity of that as well, it doesn't actually rely on the cloud. It can have quite poor connectivity to the cloud or none at all. Uh, and, and the local app will still work fine as we would expect it to. So pretty cool that they've considered all these things and factored in too. So the way that this actually works then is we go to the, the VM cloud app. We'll create a robot and we're going to do one in a minute. We'll create a new robot uh, and then we'll build up the configuration by adding components to that robot. So we'll say, let's add a board we can re and it'll recognize that this is a Raspberry Pi. Um, and we can then say that Raspberry Pi is also connected on GPIO pin three, for example, to motor A. Um, so we bring in a motor component and we can say what pins that's connected to. So it's very, very simple to sort of bring in extra components, configure them and have that robot then just work. It's so cool when it just works. Um, so the server app will take that configuration from the cloud app and then it will basically program the local version of that, the, the local server app um, with that configuration. So VM Cloud App can process all the captured data from that if we want it to. Uh, so we can make it to do things like I said, like face recognition, all the kind of open CV cool stuff that you would expect. So here's a couple of the supported boards and it's kind of a growing list. VM is actually quite a young company. So they've only been around three years. Uh, they've got quite a number of boards already covered here. So Raspberry Pis, we've got the Raspberry Pi 3 Plus. We have the um, Raspberry Pi 4, all versions of the Raspberry Pi 4. And it will also run on the Raspberry Pi um, 02W. So the newer version, the one that's got the sort of chip on, you can see from the uh, the picture there. Also runs on the BeagleBone AI64, the Texas Instruments uh, TDA4 VM. It runs on the uh, Espressif th uh, ESP32, which is a microcontroller. So I did ask VM if they were uh, working on sort of a Raspberry Pi Pico Edge version of this, uh, and they are working on um, bringing that kind of functionality that's on the ESP32. Uh, it's just a lot on their list, I guess, to, to get through, but that's certainly on there. Uh, and it's a much more scaled down version, the version that runs on the ESP32. And also it runs on the uh, NVIDIA Jetson Nano and the Orin as well. So quite a lot of uh, video capable, um, video uh, object recognition type boards that specialize in that, like the one on the top there. 
So they have their own ro rover robot. So I've got one next to me. It's absolutely epic. I'll, I'll put it on the overhead in a second. We'll have a peep inside so you can actually see uh, what's included in there. So they also rent and sell uh, their own robots. And when I say rent, you can go to the VM app right now. You can click on the try button and you can control their robot. I think you basically just get in a queue. But if you do this sort of midweek when nobody's uh, on there, you've got full use of that robot for as long as you want to play with it and just like learn the app. It's so cool. And that's just in their offices in uh, New York. Uh, that's how I think four months ago I was playing with that for like a, a couple of hours, just uh, making it wonder about and turn around and so on. So uh, yes, it, it works with uh, Raspberry Pi 4 powered. This is the VM Rover robot. The Vision, it has a web camera. Uh, so it looks like a live cam, that kind of thing. So it has a built-in microphone as well as the web camera. Uh, it has two powerful DC motors. They even have suspension. So it's, it feels a bit like um, a robot vacuum cleaner. It's got that kind of uh, suspension on the wheels. It has a, an accelerometer in there as well. It's the um, very similar to me. Just grab this one off. Uh, got one just here that I was playing with earlier. Very, very similar to the, uh, is it the MPU um, 6500, which is like a very common accelerometer board. Um, so they've got that plugged into it as well so that it can detect motion and where it's traveling. And it also has, a, it's powered by four uh, 18650 batteries, these kind of uh, batteries that are very, very common in all things. Um, robotics and EVs nowadays so we'll have a look at that oh yes and it's $99 to buy this as well which is actually quite reasonable it doesn't come with the Raspberry Pi you have to provide that and it doesn't come with any batteries just so they can ship that so I'll show you all over here on the uh, the overhead desk here I've just got uh, this uh, Pimroni trial bot that we were looking at shortly I've also got this chunky boy next to me as well which is massive robot and this is the rover so if i have just unscrewed the the four screws that uh, screw this into place if i sort of open this up you can see what's inside there so we've got the raspberry pi let's put that back there is that going to be okay uh, so we've got the raspberry pi there this is the battery pack just under here with the four batteries there's a little module there for just um, i think it's like a drop down uh, book converter and you can even unplug the the power just with these two cables here they kind of just like connect together uh, then over here we have the accelerometer that's the one that i said it looks very very similar uh, to this one here and i've got this mini breadboard and then this just a, a h bridge you know you might have seen quite a few of these already just the left and the right motor and here's the great big dc motors and the, the suspension as well with the springs so quite a simple setup really uh, but it's very very effective and then on the, the the lid is the actual web camera and that's just a usb usb web camera that plugs into the raspberry pi just there so that's how that is configured and it's just got four screws i just put the one of these into place just so it doesn't fall off there we go so we have that just there as well but today we'll be uh, we'll be having a look at the vm robot because it's kind of fully configured but we'll also try and get this uh, trial bot to move forward um, that has a raspberry pi 4 in it as well and it's available from pimroni okay let's get back to our slides let's carry on with our journey with this so we're going we're to build a robot using vm today so i'm going to show you this kind of slide by slide and then we'll go onto the web and actually build it for real and have a play with it for real okay so uh, first of all, head over to the, uh, the VM web server. So it's just app.vm.com. Or if you go to www.vm.com, you'll also find a link in the top right. The first thing you need to do is create yourself an account on there. It's completely free to do that. Um, there's not, no cost or anything like that involved. You can just create a, as many robots as you like in there currently. Uh, and then you simply just click on the, the top right of the screen, add a robot, give it a name, add the robot. So. I've got a few robots. We'll see what they're called in a minute. And it's as simple as that to begin our journey adding robots. So if you like what I do and you want me to make more of these kinds of videos, um, please, please like this video. It gives me a lot of a sense of well-being and uh, that my channel is doing well when people like the video. Drop me a comment as well. Let me know if you've heard of VM before. And if you have, let me know how you've heard of them. And also hit the uh, the bell icon as well. Um, and that means that we, you'll get subscribed to the channel. Most people are not subscribed. And uh, I really like when people do subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me. And I do go live every single Sunday at 7 o'clock UK local time BST. Uh, so if you can drop in, then uh, I really appreciate that. Okay, back to our tutorial. So once we've created our robot's name and we've clicked the add button, it then drops into this new screen, which has, um, it has locations. So you can have different locations for your robot. So um, 
I've just left it as first location, but you could have like warehouse, you could have, you know, a garage, you could have all those different kinds of locations there. Then you've got the robot's name and you can easily just uh, click on that little pencil button to rename them if you want. And then there's also this just robot main part here as well. So the first thing we want to do is set up our robot. So how does it get that cloud app sorry, the local app, the server app installed on the device. So we do that by clicking, um, you know, is it running on Linux or a Mac? Now the options that you have available at the moment. Uh, and then the architecture is it in um, AX64, which is what the Raspberry Pi uh, 4 and the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero 2W and the Raspberry Pi 3 are all they can all run 64-bit code or you've got the XA64 as well uh, which is kind of like the Intel chipset so that's um, the main things that we're going to be looking at and you can see also that we've got these tabs we're going to spend a lot of time in these tabs so this navigation from the robot main page uh, is where we're going to be doing things so mostly we're going to be spending our time either looking at configuration the logs and some control and that's how we bring our robot to life so, like I said, we're going to be setting up our robot, we're going to configure it, controlling it, and then checking the logs to see if there's any errors that we need to sort of deal with. And it's usually quite trivial things, like you've uh, put a space in where there shouldn't be one, that kind of thing, and it'll, it'll help you set that up. So next, we're going to configure our robot. Um, so the way that we do this, we click on the Configure tab. We then go over to the either the Builder or the Raw Forms. Um, sorry, the raw JSON. So the builder is kind of like a form based one. So we can see here we're using the forms. But if you ever actually got a configuration from somewhere else or you prefer to work and you understand uh, what the JSON strings are that you need, you can just work in there. And essentially that's what this builder does. It just builds up um, a configuration file that's held as a, a JSON file. Um, so then we've got some, another set under the config of like a sub menu. We've got components, services, modules, remotes, processes, fragments, auth network and frame system. So components is where we're going to add in our, um, our sensors, our motors, our boards and our bases. And we'll have a look at what each one of those means. Services is when you want something to run in the background all the time, we can create a service. Uh, if we have modules that we want to load in, we'll have a look at that too. Remotes is how we can like remotely control the robot. Processes is if we want to have a program um, run automatically at startup, we can add that as a process. Fragments are pre-configured JSON files in effect. So if we've got like this um, uh, v VM Rover robot, that comes with a fragment where they've kind of done all that configuration already. So it's just like a pre-configured um, group of settings. Authentication and networks is exactly what I should expect if you want to set up um, all that kind of tokens and uh, usernames and passwords and things like that. And then the frame system is to do with its coordinates in 3D space. So if you've got a, um, a LiDAR sensor and that's on top of your robot, we need to be able to tell the configuration that there's a LiDAR sat, you know, 20 centimeters from the you know the middle of the robot facing forward that kind of thing and that's what the frame system is about it's all about the the uh, coordinates in 3d space so that's the how we configure it and we'll get into adding some components so there's a whole bunch of components that we can add straight off the bat so if we have a robot arm such as the uh, me arm which i've got uh, next to me uh, on this this robot just here this is a, a me arm robot this is going to be chunky boy which is robot I'm currently working on. So if I want to use that with VM, then the arm component is what we would bring in. And that can help with some of that sort of inverse kinematics. I'm kind of uh, <laughs> doing the Egyptian thing there. Um, bases are um, the robot's kind of chassis. So is it a wheeled robot? Is it a walking robot? What's, what kind of base are we working from? And mostly we're going to be building uh, wheeled rover robots. Board is the, you know, is it a Raspberry Pi? Is it a Beagle Bone? The camera, as you would expect, is what kind of camera is this? Um, currently, I think there is a, a bug that's being worked on by VM about the Raspberry Pi's camera. When they started work on the Raspberry Pi camera originally, uh, they were using the legacy camera, as it's now known, and then Raspberry Pi went and changed that, so it's now the um, you know, P Pi Camera 2, I think it's uh, the library that they use. It's like a new framework, and that means that the, the software that they built no longer works, so they're having to work on that. So as a workaround, we can use like a, a USB web camera instead of the built-in one, but uh, that one will be fixed in time. 
We then get encoders. So encoders are for when we have our wheels and we want to get how many counts, um, you know, how many revolutions each wheel has done so for like really accurate positioning. We've got an encoder component for that. Gantry is a bit like on a 3D printer when you've got that sort of uh, arm that moves backwards and forwards, some kind of gantry. We can model that there. We've even got the gripper we can model. Uh, we've got an input controller so we can have our um, joy, joy pads uh, to control the robot. Obviously we have motors, movement sensors, so that's like our um, accelerometer that I've got on this little breadboard here that can uh, detect what kind of position things are in. We've got a general sensor, so for example an ultrasonic rangefinder could be used for a sensor. And then we have servo, which is, I'm um, just looking around, if I've got one of those hand. So I've got one of these little hobby servos, uh, that's for modelling these as well. Okay, so there are all the different components that we can currently use, and this list is being expanded upon. And each one of these has also got like a sub menu of supported uh, components as well. Uh, there's quite a lot of work, I guess, for Veeam to do there to uh, to build out to be including everything that's out there. Uh, but we'll see how they get with that. So the way that we can create a component, we're going to start off by creating the board component, and that's going to represent our Raspberry Pi. I've got a brand new Raspberry Pi here, Raspberry Pi 4. We'll set this one up shortly. Uh, so what we need to do is click on the configuration, go to the bottom of the components page, and then it says create a component. So we want to give this a name like Pi, nice and simple. We then want to select the board type such as board, and then the model of the board. And there's a few different um, configurations there, and Pi is one of them. Once we've done that, we click the create component, and that will set that um, component up in our, uh, in our robot. So the next up, we want to add a couple of motors. So on this particular example, I have four motors that I want to add on the Chunky Boy. On the Pimeroni um, trailer bot, this has simply got two. Um, can I do this without everything falling over? This has simply got two motors, like an A and a B. So we can set that one up quite simply. Not dropped anything. Uh, and we give that a name. So we'll start off with a left motor. We'll call that one simply left. The type is going to be a motor. And then the model, um, there's a couple of different options there. And we're going to control this motor using a H-bridge. And those H-bridge typically just have um, like two um, inputs. So I've got over here, let me just show you this. Um, I've got a, a, a typical kind of thing you get when you order some H-bridges. So for example, this is a very common type of H-bridge. Uh, you can see there it says motor A, motor B, and then it has int. If I just turn that over so you can see that bit better. It has of int 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they correspond to int 1 and 2 is for motor A, int 3 and 4 is for motor B. Uh, and we simply just need to provide some power to this, uh, plug the motors in, and then the pins go to our GPIO pins on our Raspberry Pi. So that's exactly how the VM Rover works, and that's exactly how Chunky Boy is going to work. And it's also how um, the robot, the Trilobot robot works as well. Now that has, you can just see underneath there, two little motors, and we can go to the Raspberry Pi website and see exactly what pins those motors correspond to on the board. So I've kind of already done that and we'll have a look at how that works in a second. But simply we, we do the same, exactly the same for the right motor as well. Uh, we just choose different GPIO pins. So once we click that create component, um, it will then put like a further information thing. So it will say uh, what attributes, select the board that this motor is connected to. And that's because we're going to be using the GPIO pins on that board. We can then say, does this motor have an encoder or no encoders? So the ones I'm using don't have any encoders, so I'm just going to say no encoders. There's then the max RPM, so we need to see how many revolutions per minute that these wheels will turn and basically just cap it so it doesn't go faster than that. I just set this to a thousand because if you say nothing, uh, it generates an error there. Uh, but I could do with finding out exactly what RPM these motors are. They're probably up to 300 is typical for those um, N20 micro metal motors. Um, and then it will say, how do you decide what the direction is? So you've got direction or iron one, iron two. So iron one, iron two is what we have on these little um, L298 um, end motor driver boards, H bridges. So we're gonna pick iron one, iron two, 
And then you also typically have like an enable pin to enable the motors. So you can either say neither or you can specify what that pin is. So on the trialer bot, they do have a motor enable pin and that's on GPIO 26. Or if you're just using the Broadcom, I think it's the Broadcom numbering system on the board, uh, that's actually pin 37. Um, and then on A in 1, so motor A in 1 and motor B in 2, you can see there we have GPIO 11 and GPIO 8. And that's That works with the trialer bot. So that's all we need to set there. We do have that enable pin. So if we enable 26 high, that will mean that the motors are enabled and that they will work. And that's kind of just something that's a function of that particular uh, bridge, H bridge. Okay. So once we've done that, we then can create the base. The base is going to be the thing that understands where the wheels are connected to the physical chassis and what distance apart they are and so on. So we first of all give the, the base a name. So I'm just going to call it base very creatively. We're going to select the type as being base. And then we can say what kind of robot is this? So this is a wheel robot. And then we're simply going to go create the component. Once we've done that, we get like another little sub form that we have to fill out. So it will say, Give me the right motors and the left motors and you simply just click the drop down at the motor in that you've just created on the previous step for both of those. It then needs to know the wheel circumference. So some feedback I would give to VM here is why do we need to figure out what the circumference of the wheel is when typically we will get a wheel and we will know what the diameter of the wheel is. And the diameter of the wheel um, can be used to calculate the circumference. It's just a pi r squared thing, isn't it? To, to work out the circumference. Why do we have to put that in there surely it's just a uh, yeah there you go circumference equals pi times the diameter so surely they could do that in the background i'll just feed that back then the width of the wheels and that's not the the width of the tires that's the distance between the two wheels because that'll give us our sort of turning radius um so how what's how far apart are they i also just recommend that they instead of saying width is distance between the two wheels um, and then we then just say that this then depends upon the pi um the pi board once we've done that, we can then click and save that configuration and we're very nearly done then. So next we want to build a remote control. So we want to be able to control this robot remotely over the web using a, a keyboard or just clicking uh, or dragging some other motors. So the way that we do this, we just click on the remotes. We um, create a new remote and then just say, give it a name and create the remote. Nice and simple. And then we can make it move. So we can then use the remote control um, to control the robot. And we're going to do this in a second with both the Rover robot from VM and also our trial bot. We're going to set that up too. Um, and then you can see there we've got like the ASD, WASD kind of controls. We can control the actual power of it. And if we've also got a web camera, we can actually display what it can see in real time as a stream as well, which is so cool. So I think at this point we should now head over to um, the web and we should create a new robot. So I'm just going to get my screen prepared for that. Let me just uh, get everything ready for that. And then let me just move that down there. And let's play with this. So. So I'm just going to head over to VM, get myself over here. So if I go to um, app.vm.com, here we go. And I've already logged in. So I've got a number of different uh, robots set up on here. We can see Roberta is live and the trial bot is uh, offline at the moment. So if I just uh, give that a off and on again. Uh, we'll see that that uh, trial bot also appears on there as being alive. But I actually want to create a new robot. I've got a brand new Raspberry Pi that's waiting to be uh, opened. I've got a memory card which I've burnt. Burnt. I've flashed this with the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, remember? Um, and then I've got a power lead and some network cable so we can actually configure this in real time live and you can see just how easy this is. So let me do that. First of all, I'm going to uh, I'm going to open up this uh, brand new Raspberry Pi. So the uh, the drought of Raspberry Pis is now over. You can get hold of these pretty easily uh, worldwide. So here we have a brand new unboxing. So this is the uh, two gig version. I've got a nice case here as well, the official Raspberry Pi case. So what I need to do is Put the memory card into this as well. It's easier to do this now, I think, before we put it in there. 
Let me see if that's actually true or not. No, maybe maybe I need to put that in last. I'm, I got this wrong once, and then when I put it in, it ripped off the uh, the SD memory card holder. There we go. Right, so I've now got the uh, the Raspberry Pi's memory card in there. Raspberry Pi is ready to go. Just to make sure that this works for, for a demo, I'm going to plug in a network cable as well, but you don't technically need to do this. And I've got some power ready to go as well. So I just power that up. I'm actually not going to plug in any uh, monitors or anything or a keyboard or mouse because I've done the configuration already using the Raspberry Pi imager. So it probably just takes it a couple of moments to uh, to flash, to come online, resize its file system and then boot up for the first time. So I think it's just resize its file system and it's going to boot up again. And you'll just see there you go, it's gone off and it's going to come back on and then do its uh, business. There we go, it's booted back up again. So once I have that I just leave that over there for a second. Stay there. Um, we can now go over. I've got a piece of software that I use on my network, uh, which is simply called Fing. So let me just get Fing up. Uh, I'll show you this on the screen in a second. So we have a Fing. Come on, Fing. And this will scan my network for new devices. So I want to find Chonky Boy, which is the name of the, uh, the Raspberry Pi host name that I've just added on. So if I just wait for this uh, to fire up, this is the, the boring slow bit. While it's doing that, I'm just going to create over here the name of the robot. So let's call this one Chunky Boy. So it's Chunky with a, a zero like that. I'm going to click Add Robot. So here we go. So what we need to do, and I'm going to delete this after the show. So um, don't try and be funny and connect to this robot. If you can see the secret key there, you make a note of it. It won't work after the show. Uh, let me just see if fingers connected. Yes, it has. So I basically wanted to do a refresh on the network and find Chunky Boy just so I know what the IP address is. And then we can SSH into it um, and basically just cut and paste this code. So we simply just come down here. We've got only three steps. We want to download the VM app config to our computer. So we simply click copy on there. It says success. That's now in the clipboard ready to go. And once I know what the IP address of Chunky Boy is, we can uh, we can connect to it. And of course, with this being a live show, this is now deciding not to scan the network very quickly. Uh, so what I will do, I will just find it uh, another way. Let me just let me just go back to me for a second while I connect to my broadband router, and I get the IP address from there. So that's that. So Adam was just saying that the uh, the Bangles song is uh, more like an Egyptian when I was trying to do a demonstration of what an arm looks like just in case people didn't know that right so i'm just uh, on my uh, bt home hub just trying to get the ip address of the uh, the device i want to uh, to find unless fingers found that first oh, of course it hasn't yet let's hit the refresh on there and let's see if i can find the name of chunky boy so device name okay so basically just get it to find so I'm just going to search on here what the the address is of Chunky Boy. Oops, that's not the one I'm after. Just bear with me a second. Uh, so that's frustrating. So what I did do, just in case something went wrong, I have. actually got a keyboard mouse and monitor just so we can connect this to the Raspberry Pi because I suspected something like that might have happened. I just need to plug this in. Okay, so what I've just done is I've just plugged in the Raspberry Pi that's behind me into a keyboard, mouse and monitor, and I can now see uh, the screen and see everything that's on there. So it's already logged in, so let me just see what the IP address is. Let me just move this on here and you can see what I'm doing. So 
and I go over to the overhead. I've just got a little monitor there. I've got a keyboard and mouse, so I can basically just do, uh, uh, is it IF config? Or is it just IP dash A, I think? Or IP. Let's try that in. So IF config dash A. So 179 is the IP address there. So if I go over to my terminal, uh, and let's see if we can uh, SSH into this. So I think I called it kev192.168.1.179. Yes. Okie doke. Cooking with gas. So as long as it accepts the password that I typed in before, which I'm sure was that. Did I not type kev as the username? I'm sure I did. 79791.179. Yep. So well, let's just uh, set the password. Let's do sudo password. Right, okay. So I've got the password there. And we should be in once we've done that. It's definitely the right password. So is it not the right username? Kev is the new username on there. <laughs> that's hilarious. So why is it not letting me in there? Let me just check that that's right. SSH 192179. And then what's the username on here? I'll tell you what, let's username. If I go to raspy config. We can configure our Raspberry Pi that way. So let's go over to the overhead. So what I'm doing on here, if I just move that screen up like that, you might be able to see it. I'm just basically just going to configure it uh, through here. So let's just do wireless LAN. Um, so we're on home and there, and then display options. That's fine. Actually, let's set the VNC to be on. Do that uh, 1068, that's okay. Then let's have interface options. VNC is enabled. Let's make sure SSH is definitely enabled as well. And then we should be good to go then. So it's just going to reboot that. Shouldn't take it too long to do that. And I'm just going to check on Fing to see if that's uh no that 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 completely failed using Fing. So let's go back. I'm just uh, trying to load up thing on my desktop as well. And then we can get back to the bit where we're actually going to copy this uh, configuration uh, to our terminal. So that's what I'm just waiting for it to do now. Once we've got that done, it's so Wayne saying there, I have uh, HDMI capture for my streams when I did those cheap USB HDMI capture, word, capture cards work okay. So I do have a number of, uh, of, the, of capture cards. I've got I've got one expensive one for the main camera here. This is a an Elgato HD 60 plus. Uh, and then I've also got a cheap one for the overhead camera, which is this overhead camera. This is using a HDI, uh, one of those cheap ones, like you said, but I don't think the cheap ones, you can have many of them. Uh, so, so there is that. Right, let's see if we've uh, got this to boot up yet. Still thinking about that. forcibly turn it on off again if this, this bit doesn't work we'll just skip this and we'll go straight to the uh, getting the software to work i just wanted to demonstrate how easy this was to do but clearly setting up a raspberry pi on a live stream isn't that easy to do when things uh, don't work the way you expect them to there we go so it's actually booting up the desktop now i can see over here which is good i go to the uh, the overhead camera i just saw for a second the uh, user interface pop up there we go uh, and that means I can VNC into it. So if I just find what the VNC is, it just makes it easier to cut and paste. That's really what I want to be able to do there. So let's just see what we have. It's 179, that's right. Okay, so if I go over to VNC on my computer, uh, let's type in that 192.168.1.179. Yep, that's okay. Let's connect up. So it's actually Kev. <laughs> I don't understand why it's not recognised my username. Uh, is it? Is it definitely just Kev? 
That must have been why it wasn't letting me uh, connect up before. Yeah, just being very, very unresponsive and slow that one. Right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna scrap that one. Forget that. Let's go back over to our our main demo then. So assume that we've copied this into the terminal and we pasted in that. Um, simply just going over to the terminal and like pasting it in like that. And then we do the same with the other. We just copy that. We go over to the terminal, paste that in. What that will do is that will actually install and start up a service, which is the VM cloud service uh, running on there. So let me find the other computer that I've got on here, which is uh, I think on, I think this is on 192.168.1.78. See the 78, let's try that. There we go. So this is the trailer bot. We've already got that running on there. So if I find the VM app, it's actually already running in the background. Now you can see there VM server, mount VM server. That's the actual process running in the background and I'm logged in here onto the trailer bot itself. So let's, let's pretend that we were doing this on the trailer bot. What we then do is go over to the configure tab we would then create a new component and we actually don't need the server to be running, the Raspberry Pi to be running to do this configuration anyway, so we can carry on uh, as if there was no issues there in the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is add our Pi board. So I'm going to call it Pi, I'm going to type board, and I'm going to select that it's uh, a Pi. So let's do that. So let's create the component. Let's um, now go to another component. Let's create a base. So the base is like the chassis. Let's just create that. Uh, and this is going to be a wheeled base, create that. Um, I haven't actually set up the motors yet, so let's just do that now. So let's set up uh, the left motor. Let's go to uh, motors as the type of uh, component. And then this is just simply just going to be a GPIO. Um, and then we'll add the right motor in as well. I'll come back to the other bits and pieces about which GPIO pins it's on in a second. Let's go to motor and GPIO as well. Let's create that. And then what we then need to do for both the left and the right, we need to tell them what board they're connected to. Um, specify that max VPN. And then we need to say which pins they are on. So the one that we had before for the um, for the trailer bot, um, I can't remember off the top of my head what they were. But the way that I found this out, if I actually go over to the, uh, the Pimeroni website, if I go over to trailer bot, there's our trailer bot, which you can buy now. There you go. If you do buy one of these, when you go to this store and say uh, add to cart, there's a like a, a code you can add in there. Just add Kevin as the code and I'll, I'll thank you later for this. Right, so down here we have Python library. So if I click on Python library, that'll take us to the GitHub repository. And I found out if we click on library, trailer bot, and then the init.py, we can actually see what all the GPIO pins are. So they're all the different buttons. Uh, these are all the different lights. But look over here, we have um, we have the left positive and left negative, right positive and right negative. So 26 and 8. So if I go over back to here to um, Chunky Boy and I say um, 8. So GPIO 8. Let's just find that. There we go. And then what was the other one? It was 8 and 26. So let's just add 26 as the other one. Oops, so we've done 8. And then let's do 26, which is there. And then we don't set the pulse with modulation. We have got an enable pin. And if I go back over to that trailer bot one, we can see that the enable pin is actually pin 26 there. So let's go back and then just set pin 26 to be our enable pin. Okay, there we go. So let's save that configuration for now. And then we need to do the same then with the, the left um, wheel as well. So um, let's, we, we've, we've configured the right wheel. So then the left wheel simply just needs to have that same information. So it's 10 and 11 for those. Let's go, sorry, it is nine and 10 for those. So let's just do, uh, GPIO 9. Oh, so we need to set the board to be the Pi. Max revolutions per second. It's about 1,000 for now. Then we can say it's 9 and 10. So there we go. 9 and 10. 
and we have that enable pin which is at 26 as well there it is and then we can save that configuration so now if we go back up to um, the board the, uh, the base sorry we can now say that the right motor is connected to the right component the left motor is connected to the left component the wheel circumference um, I can't remember off the top of my head what this was let's just grab some calipers and measure them so about 47 uh, so um, what do we say that was? 47 times by uh, pi, was it? 147.65, so 147. Oops. 147. And then the width between them, I think it was about 120, something like that, millimetres. Uh, and then we just click on that save configuration down there. And now, um, well, I think we also would just say that that depends on pi because we do need that to be working there as well. It just sets like a bit of a dependency tree going on. Uh, and then did we have, so we have a board, we have a base, we've got two wheels. Um, we could add in the range finder as well. I found that a bit hit and miss. Um, I think I had some of the configuration wrong about how many milliseconds it has to send out a pulse. So I need to get the, uh, the exact uh, pulse uh, information for that but I can actually go to uh, if I go back to our code here and I go to our VM trial bot here I created a very simple um, Python 3 trial bot VM did I not put that in there trial bot VM Oh, I mustn't have saved the code on that one. Oh, no, there it is, ping test, I beg your pardon. So it's ping test. I basically wanted to test out that the range finder was working. So if we just do source VNV, this is basically just a virtual environment if you've not seen this before. And in here I have uh, ping.py. So ping.py, uh, it's just a very simple program and we'll send out a pulse and just measure the distance back. So I just wanted to test that, uh, that the, the, the ultrasonic range finder was actually working. So if I do that, I can basically just measure the distance. Um, so if I move my hand in front of it, I can see there. If I just try to show you that. So these circular things here, these are the ultrasonic range finders. So as I'm putting my hand in front of it here, we can see that it's measuring the distance quite accurately. So that was just me making sure that that does actually work. So we should be able to add that in uh, as, a, as another component. So if we scroll down to the bottom of this page, go to components, and we're going to call this one uh, range underscore finder uh, the type is going to be a sensor not a movement sensor but a sensor and then we can see that there's an ultrasonic sensor there we can create the component so it needs to know what the trigger pin and the echo pin are so let's go back over to our um, uh, Pimroni MicroPython uh, Python library so the trigger is on 13 and echo is on 25 so trigger is 13 trigger is 13 and the echo was on 25. The board is called pi. And there's also this uh, timeout in milliseconds. I'm going to leave that, to be honest. Let's save the configuration. So now let's go over to, let's go to the logs and see if there's any, um, there's no issues yet. Make sure you have set up. Okay, and that's because I've actually not launched this onto Chunky Boy yet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to my robots. I'm going to see now if we have, uh, yep, Trialobot is live there. So if I click on Trialobot, uh, we can see that I've basically done the same configuration that I've just shown you now on there. Uh, I have also added a remote. So you simply just type in the IP address of the, uh, uh, of the Raspberry Pi. And we can now go to the Control tab. So if I click on Control, I can now see that I've got this uh, plus minus. So let me just move some of the stuff off here. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to be able to move this robot using these uh, 
uh, up and down left and right keys. And let's just move this kind of into view there. So <laughs> this is where it flies off the desk. I've currently got it uh, powered by a, a cable as well, so that might pull it to the right slightly, but there is a battery on top, so we could have this running completely on battery power if we wanted to. So I'm gonna set the power to be like really, really low power to begin with. And if I just press that there, can you see that the robot is rolling forward? Let's give it a bit more juice. Let's scroll this forward to about 50%. And then let's do that so we can go backwards. We can spin it left, we can spin it right, like so. Um, now, I'm not sure whether the uh, the range finder is going to work. I'm going to click on the get readings, but sometimes I get an error message. And I have got that error message right now where it says failing to get some sensor reading. And I think it's how I've got that configured. So I need to just check back with VM about how to do that. But it does actually work. I have had that working before. So, yeah, you can see that we have our trial bot, which is just a commercially available off the shelf robot. Uh, working with VM in a very short amount of time. Uh, me not be able to set up a Raspberry Pi is a different issue, I think, so um, might be an issue with a memory card. Now we can actually use another robot. So let me have a look at, let's move all this off the desk over here. So we have this VM robot as well. If I just, uh, can I scroll, can I go back further than that? I go to that one there. You can see we have the VM robot just here. I'm going to move it as far back as I can to give it a bit of running space. And we'll do the same thing, but with our VM robot. So if I go back over here, let me just scroll the screen down a little bit. Uh, back to our robots, our fleet of robots. And we have um, Roberta. Roberta is this VM robot just here. So if I click on that, I go to control. And this one has a camera. So it also has accelerometers, it has left and right encoders as well. Uh, and we have the camera. So I'm gonna get a very, a very flattering shot of my stomach now as we go to the live camera view. Uh, <laughs> there we go. You can see me just there. Uh, and if I go back up to the top there, we can actually have that camera feed like that as part of our, our view. So if I now move this robot forward, let's make it go backwards and forwards by giving it a bit more juice. There we go, we can see the robots moving forward and you can see my live feed moving as well as we do that. Now, because I've got this uh, connected to this power cable, that's probably dragging a little bit as well, uh, but that's fine. So we can use those keys, we can then make it sort of spin on the spot, left and right, and we can make it back up as well. Cool. Let's get back over to our keynote. <laughs> So that's how we do our remote control and how we get the robots up and running. So VM can do way more than just that. This is just the beginning sort of half an hour, an hour setup of how you can use VM. So you can do data management. So if we have our webcam there and I want to take, um, I want this to be like a sentry robot looking at my door there to make sure that only people that it recognizes come through the door. Um, I could basically train it on my face. So I'd have to take maybe a hundred pictures of my face from various different angles, me looking, from, you know, near and far. Uh, and that kind of data capture, typically you'd have to do that, um, store that in a file um, and then prepare that for your machine learning model. They do all that sort of for you. Simply just get it to capture some images. You can then draw the rectangles around them to sort of say this is Kevin's face. Um, all that is within the VM tool. So very simple to do that. We can also do motion. So this is like the um, um, navigation paths. We can see there we can do we can even do slam. We can do simultaneous location and mapping if we have a LiDAR. We have a LiDAR robot in the back of the robot lab, so I'm going to get that up and running uh, on VM soon. We've seen the remote control, we can do that. We can do the frame system where you can look at things in 3D space. Um, we can build machine learning models. We can bring our sensors and our computer vision in there. So we can do things like line following. We can do object recognition, color detection, all that through the onboard camera. So very, very powerful stuff. So VM is pretty cool. So you might be thinking, well, how does this compare to ROS then, or ROS, the uh, robot operating system? So ROS is a framework and some tools such as the visualization environment, whereas VM is a platform for development as well as a tool set. So there's different there. One's a, a framework for, for developing Python, C++ type programs, Rust, whatever. 
VM is a platform that uh, is a cloud-based platform that can run code locally on your robot as well. ROS has quite a steep learning curve, so if anybody's ever looked at ROS, you'll probably appreciate that it's quite a lot of stuff to learn, even to do the basics, whereas VM can be learned in an afternoon. It's very, very quick to sort of pick up there. ROS runs locally on your own hardware, whereas VM runs locally, but with cloud infrastructure as well. Um, so when I said about the, uh, the data model and um, the data management, um, if you want to use ROS beyond a certain threshold, you will have to pay for them to store that data. But I think it's, it's kind of aimed at commercial entities rather than hobbyists. I'm just going to stop that from bouncing on the screen there because that was just irritating. Um, so there are some charges there, but for the hobbyist, uh, I've not seen any charges incurred there. You can certainly build as many robots as you like. Uh, there's no fee to use it. It's more to do with if you store vast amounts of machine learning data, they've got to pay for their servers to be uh, kept up. So it's basically that. So yeah, it's free to use with pricing based on uh, data usage and processing. So all the machine learning stuff, they can do that quicker than you can probably do it on your own local hardware. Uh, and compared to that, ROS is free to use, but doesn't have all that uh, capability there for you. And you can use them. It's not mutually exclusive. It's not like you're either using VM or ROS. You can build ROS robots and use VM to control them as well. So they can work together. It's not mutually exclusive. So if you want to learn more about, uh, want to learn about, about ROS, for example, you can head over to uh, kesrobots.com slash learn. If you want to uh, do the new SQL Lite 3 course that I built uh, very recently. You can head over and learn that one. And I will be building a VM course as well. So I'm just currently working on that. I just want to make sure it's the best course I can do. But the courses are being built out all the time. And there's actually now a new feature on kevsrobots.com. If I actually head over to uh, kevsrobots, there is learning pathways. Excuse me. So the learning pathways uh, series of courses. So say you want to learn robotics, you can click on the robotics learning pathway and then there's a series of courses that you can then pick. So like the Robotics 101, then the Python for beginners, then learning MicroPython basics, then learning MicroPython with GPIO mastery. Uh, and then you can use the Robot Eye Mechanism one as well, for example. So it kind of gives you a step-by-step -step building on previous knowledge. Uh, you can just jump into any of the courses and obviously they're all free as well. So the learning um, learning pathways is a new feature. Uh, so check that out. So there's one about databases. So if you wanted to check out how to use uh, SQLite or Redis, there's two courses available to you there. And if you want to learn like 3D design, um, then there's a couple of courses like how to design a robot in Fusion 360, as well as that robot eye mechanism one as well. So yeah, check those out completely free. Uh, let me know what you think about those. And I do merch as well. So I was on I was on a Discord group uh, today, just poking around because there was somebody had mentioned my name, uh, and it was about the uh, the Bluetooth um, module. I did a video on how to control your robots with Bluetooth, and somebody said on there, "Why would I watch a video that's like an hour long and like buy merch that's tacky?" So yeah, I specialize in tacky merch. So you want to help me support the show with some uh, tacky merch? Then. Uh, Go to kevsrobots.com slash merch and just, just for spite, just buy something. <laughs> so if you want to join our very ha happy, healthy and non-aggressive, uh, passive-aggressive Discord group, if you go to kevsrobots.com slash Discord, then you can join our Discord community as well. Uh, we don't allow kind of that kind of negativity on our channel. <laughs> So you want to follow me on social media, then I'm all over social media. I'm on uh, threads. So if you go to kevinmackley at threads.net, you'll find me there. Uh, I'm on uh, TikTok, kevinmackley6. I'm on Instagram, where I post quite a lot of pictures and videos. Uh, so at kevinmackley on Instagram. And obviously on Twitter, I'm at kevsmack. And on, so on um, Mastodon, I'm at kevsmack at mastodon.social as well. So say hi on social media and let me know who you are and I can uh, follow you back. And yeah, if you want to help support the show, then you can do this a number of different ways. Um, if you head over to kesrobots.com slash coffee, you can get your name in the credits at the end. If you're watching this live, you can do a super chat. I'll make sure that button is all switched on there. I think it is. Yes, there it is. And if you want to join the YouTube membership program, there's a little join button at the bottom of the player as well. And you can uh, join for like a monthly price of a coffee as, as well. So, um, <laughs> all the people saying, boo, <laughs> series merch is boring. 
so if you are one of our supporters, I want to give you a bit of a shout out now. Wait, the screen's worked properly. So uh, Slarty Bartfast bought me a coffee. <laughs> Slarty Bartfast, is that a funny name? <laughs> Something can slip up very easily. <laughs> Slatty Batfa. Yeah, well, it's it's uh, from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It's one of the uh, the characters. He designed all the fiddly bits around Norway, didn't he? He built the Earth and the Earth Two. Uh, thank you to Tom as well, to Roland and to Mike for the coffees. Really appreciate that. And to our regular Buy Me a Coffee members as well. So we've got Dean Corti, we've got Marley Brent, we've got John. Tom, Shemi and Steve. Thank you for that. Thanks, Steve. Um, we have on the uh, YouTube member side, we've got Tinkering Rocks. Hey, Tinkering, how are you doing? We've got Cassie, who's on the live chat. Hi, Cassie. We've got uh, JDM, uh, Johnny Bates. We have um, Bill. We have Oxrad39, Jose, Jeff. We have Hans from Cheerlights. We have uh, Michael and, of course, Tom. So thank you really for supporting the show. Really appreciate that. Uh, thanks to, to VM as well for providing this robot today. It's been really fun playing with that. I'm going to have this as a permanent resident of the robot lab, I think, now. Um, so I think that's everything I needed to, to shout out. Yes, that's everything on the, uh, the keynote. So this is the point in the video where I'll say, if you're watching this on replay, thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you next time.